Hello and welcome to the second of uh, my videos uh, that I'm recording at the moment on a Sunday morning before throwing classes. This week I thought we'd have a little go at making um, a nice simple dancing figured tea light holder. Because Halloween is coming I've done it witch themed but this could equally well be dancing gingerbread men, it could be dancing Santas, it could be anything you like. Firstly though we're going to need to make a template so I'm going to move these ladies out away for a minute and show you how we're going to do that. So I have here a gingerbread cutter obviously they come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes uh, this is quite a smallish one because I don't want the tea light holder to be too big but you can make bigger ones entirely up to you. And we're going to use this as the basis of our human shape. So I've got a piece of cardboard here what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to draw around the outside of the cutter. Okay, like that. So now I've got that little shape. From that I'm going to refine that a bit. So I'm going to make his head a little bit more defined. So I'm actually going to bring that in like that. Make it more like that. This is quite an old cutter, as you can see it's not a great shape, but that doesn't really matter. I'm then going to make the arms a little bit thinner well I'm going to have them more like that make them a little longer like that and because what I'm doing is going to be a witch not a gingerbread man I'm actually going to turn the legs into the skirt so I'm just going to draw a line across there for the skirt no witch is complete without a hat so that's the next thing to do so we're going to mark where the hat's going to go so I'm going to put the a line Shows where the hat is. I'm just going to have a nice pointy end to it, and then the hat comes up. I'll just turn that around so I get at it better into a point. Now we're going to shape the point of this when we actually put the thing together, but that just gives us the basic form. And again, if you wanted to make this into, say, snowmen, uh, you could then make that into like a little square top hat or anything at all. Really, it doesn't need to have a hat. And of course, you can add other things to it when we put it together. Father Christmas, same idea, only the hat wouldn't have pointed edges, it'd have curved edges. Um, or yeah, whatever you want to do, really. Having made the template, the next thing we'll do is cut it out. Well, I'm ahead of you here because I've already done one. So here's one I made earlier in True Blue Beta style. Save you watching me doing the boring job of cutting out a template. So here's my little template that I'm going to use. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as a slab construction. So I've actually rolled out a slab of clay ready. And what I've done is I've used two guide sticks. These guide sticks are six millimetres deep. The clay that we use, which is a, a stoneware clay which of course shrinks during firing, that's the sort of the thinnest you want to go. Probably the thinnest you want to go with any type of clay, uh, including air dry. You don't want it too thin and brittle when it fires or, or even if it's dried. So I rolled out a piece of clay into a nice long slab which I've got here and then uh, I've cut out using my template I've cut out my witches but I've done it so they're all actually joined together at the bottom here and to try and make life interesting I've cut the template one way that, that way then I've turned it over to cut it the other way so the hats are all at different angles and then I've cut round each of the figures as I say now, we need a base as well. Now, I've already measured the bottom of my template here, and it's six and a half. So then what I've done is I've multiplied that by four, because that's how many figures I want round, and worked out that I need uh, a circle that's about 26 centimetres. So then I found a pastry cutter here, which is actually, when I measure it, almost exactly what I want around that part. And that's going to cut out the base. I'm going to do that with a piece of cling film because plastic sticks to clay, although it depends on how dry the clay is as to how badly it sticks. This particular cling film is lovely because it's perforated. If only I can find the perforations. There we go. Right there. So let's tear off a piece. Okay. Let's see, let's see. So I'm going to lay the cling film down on the clay like that. And then I'm going to use my cutter, press in, nice and hard, 
give it a wiggle, make sure it's going right the way through. Take it out. Now I have the base for my tea light holder. Whatever size you use, of course it can vary depending upon whether you want to make it bigger or not, you do have to consider this is going to shrink. So it needs to be big enough to still hold a tea light after, or a candle or whatever you're going to put in it, after it's shrunk. I happen to know that, that will work for me. Now I'm going to get it off there. So I'm going to get my knife, just to trim these surplus bits off. Take it out the way for a minute. And I'm just going to lift this off here. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to move my witches off here and put it on the banding wheel. Now I'm going to take my witches that I've cut out of their clay here. Taken the tip off a hat there, but it doesn't really matter. We'll shape it again when we're done. Just take those off there. Make sure these are coming through now. There we go. Get those pieces out of the way. If you find that your pieces have stuck to the board, just run a knife underneath them and come up. I'm trying to be very careful now not to break the join at the bottom. So next, I get my circle. We're going to have to join this, so I want to make sure the witches stay attached. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go around the outside. I mean, you could do this with the witches on the top, which is what I did with this original one. With this original one, I had a bigger circle, and I put the witches onto the top. This one, now I'm going to put the witches around the side. So let's uh, measure it all up. I should say we've measured it cut it all up so that the clay will stick properly and then I get some slip which of course is just clay and water add a little bit more to it this morning so it's a little bit sloppy but this will act as our glue paint that round like that and put that back on the banding wheel now we very very carefully pick our witches up because I don't want them to tear apart at the bottom and that's the only thing that's holding them together so Try and support them at every join. And we get them upright, standing up, come on ladies. And we position them round our base, like that. Okay. Now, they obviously wanted to fall outwards, so I'm going to just fold them in a bit just to make sure they stay put while I go round the base now and make sure that they're all attached to the bottom. go ladies there we go now the reason I left the hands free is because I'm going to add some brooms in there but again you don't really need to these could be joined on just make a very simple small tea light holder like that but I'm going to add some brooms so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some clay I'm going to cut some strips The edges off them. I'm not worried about making them completely round. Those of you who hate coils are pleased to hear. All I'm really looking to do is just take the edges off a bit, make them a little bit less square. I probably don't need more than that. So I'll cut another strip, do the same. If you don't have a steady enough hand to do it, or don't feel you have a steady enough hand to do it, it's okay to use a ruler. I'm not too proud of the fact that these are not completely even, but it doesn't matter, they're only witches. I'm sure their brooms weren't actually straight anyway. Okay. Then I'm going to make some broom heads. And I'm going to do this by cutting some triangles of clay. Oops. And in order to speed the process up, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut that so I can cut them one at a time. Is that going to work? No, probably not. Okay, let's put it like that. Uh, cut another one from there. If that's a template. Clay. So making the use of all the clay that I rolled out earlier. 
I rolled out a nice big piece to start with so that I don't have to keep coming back and rolling clay. The advantage of doing that as well is we're working all the pieces from the same piece of clay and therefore the same dryness of clay. So you're not going to be at risk of one piece being wetter than the other and shrinking at a different speed, which will cause cracks. So I'll do that. So I've now got four broom heads. One, two, three, four, for our four witches. I'm going to measure my broom. So I'm going to nip off the end of that, make sure it's flat. I want my broom probably to be about that, just level with the tips of their, their hats. So I'll cut that. Okay, so now I use that again to measure and I cut all four to the same size. Whenever you're making sets of anything, it's always good to actually make the pieces first before you start trying to put them together. It's particularly important with things like eyes. Okay, four matching broomsticks. Now we're going to join our broom heads to our broomsticks. So a little bit of slip on there. Rough it up as well. Okay, put that on there. work them together. So turn that over, smooth that in. Okay, it's going to look a little bit like a paddle at this point. That's fine. Okay. I'm not going to cut that into the broom shape yet not until I've attached it. So that's one done. Do the others very quickly. that yeah, and repeat with the next one okay. if you can hear any splashing noises that's because it's absolutely hammering it down outside at the moment like that. and then the last one You find you're having trouble smoothing things down you just seem to be making it rougher wash your hands if your hands have got clay stuck to them you won't smooth things properly so now next go back to our witches i'm going to put the brooms on next because at the moment if i try and stand them up straight they're going to collapse out so we don't have the brooms so these are going to witches are going to slope out a little bit to get the broomstick in. So the broomstick's going to go in there. This is still too big, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. And that's the thing about sculpting. It's okay to sort of go, mm, yeah, that doesn't work, but that's a lot better. So what I'm then going to do is going to get to the ends of their arms. Slip on them. And give them a broomstick. So I'm going to stand it there hands against it there. Right. Okay. I'll come back to fix that properly in a bit. On to the next witch. Again, let's move it there. Scratch it there rather. So I'll slip on it. Get the broomstick, check for the length. I'm gonna to have to trim a bit off on time because I did that last time. Okay. Go. Let's stand the broomstick on the outside there, and again, touch the hands to it there. And each time we're doing this, because we're strengthening up the structure. Like that. Okay, on to the next witch. These witches are bending out a little bit more than my other ones did, but I think that's quite nice. You guys, come on ladies, in a bit, come on. Big gap there. So, when we get to you, gonna come on. Scratch the hands like that. And slip on it. Of course, if you're doing a Christmas thing, you don't have to necessarily do this. They could be just holding hands, or you could be really creative and have them holding stockings or something. If you want to go for something that's going to give you some nice bright colours. Okay. And the last one, I just need to get off that. Again, scrape the hands. 
So I'm going to get rid of the broom. It's a hot. Right. Now I've done that, that of course makes it a little bit stronger. And this means we can now work on the inside. Because at the moment, these pieces are just laid around the bottom. And they're not going to stay there for fire. So we have to fix them. So again, getting a piece of the original clay that I used. I'm going to cut a strip off it. So easy. I've got a banding wheel today that has a mind of its own. Then I'm going to paint some slip all the way round the inside here. Like that. A strip of clay, like an arrow. Or if it doesn't go all the way around, this piece doesn't. You can see there, you can probably see that there's a little gap. So, woo, there we go. I'm losing my broomstick. Put a little bit more clay in. Now it's important that I join these two pieces together. So that's the witch on the side and the base. So I put a coil in, I put a piece of clay in there. So I've got to smooth it down onto the bottom of the pot and up onto the coil. You can use all sorts of different tools to do that. The one I've got to hand you at the moment is my pencil. So what I'm going to do is do that. I'm just going to go around the inside, smooth the witch onto the side. I'll show you in a minute, you might see it better. Always support the witches from the outside so you don't push them off the side. So it doesn't really matter what the tool is you use. You can use all sorts of tools in pottery. You don't have to be proud about it. Some people spend a fortune on tools, and that's fine if you've got that money. Um, but it's not necessary. Sometimes it's nice to have, you know, if you've got somebody who wants to buy a Christmas present and all the rest of them to get them to buy you tools, that's great. But don't tell them that you could actually use a pencil or a lollipop stick if you want to get the best presents. Gone around all the way around the inside. Now I'm just going to smooth it down, and the best tool to do this with is your finger. Or if you can't do it with your finger for whatever reason, then again a lollipop stick works just fine. I'm supporting it on the outside. Make sure I don't push the witches off. There we go. And you can spend another 10 minutes smoothing it, and I'm not going to. But you get the general idea. So now, just to finish it off, so we've got our witches. They are now in place, but they're still looking a little bit pointy. And their broomsticks need a bit of work. So we now need to make sure that they don't let go of their broomsticks. So we're going to get some little pieces of clay, like this. And on the inside, I'm going to put it across between the hands and the broomstick. So like that, make a little securing bit. Again, you can use all sorts of tools. I'm going to use my pencil just to smooth it in. Like that, there, and that there. In case you're wondering, yes, we have terrible pencils in here. They're always full of clay. Like that. Make it nice and secure. Do the same on all the sides. I don't want any broomsticks falling off. Like that piece here. Inside there. Try and brace it while you do it. Stick that down. Repeat all the way around to get sure your broomsticks are on properly. And you straighten them up. So I'm also going to press them in at the bottom to make sure again that they're not going to come off. All the way around. And then in there, straighten them up. Very wonky broomsticks. Now for the final details. Witches hats look better if they're a little bit curved. So I'm just going to manipulate the hat a little bit in my hand, give it a little bit of a twist the top make sure my points are straight too again it doesn't have to be pointing the same way they can go different directions 
little twist in them. Some could be more twisty than others, just to give it a bit of uniqueness. Occasionally points are pointed. Counting the hats. Of the broomsticks, to make them look a little bit more brooms, a bit less like they're about to go canoeing, I'm just going to cut some bristles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to split some marks in, like that first of all, and then take some little V pieces out. Push them together a bit, a bit more roughing up. Put another V in there, I think. Like that. Just make them look a bit more like broomsticks. And repeat all the way around. So do that on every single broomstick to get the effect. And then there we go. We're done. Nice little simple make for a Sunday morning. Again. That, that will be ready, it's still September, so to the end of the month to get it fired, finished and glazed and ready for somebody to have some fun with it. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you all again very soon.